just on one thing um, when she said, uh, where does the money go and that the Egyptian government has a copy of every payment. I think I could also um, assign this because uh, the Egyptian government is also highly bureaucratic, uh, an old socialist, um, um, I don't know, from the old socialist uh, Hosni Mubarak era, so everything has to go to the Mugama and has to be paid back. So have you tried to follow back also where the money would like the money route or yeah. what did you find out? Yeah, I was very interested in the money because like one of the rules is if you want to find out something you have to follow the money, you know, it's good to see where the money goes. But I was more interested to see where the money goes in Sinai, you know. I mean, uh, everything else is, is, is clear, uh, as Marin uh, put it out, you know. Uh, MoneyGram is used, the Western Union is used, the, 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 all the papers is there, the, the, the names of the people, the account numbers, everything is there. So, but, but what, is, what is unclear is, uh, what do the people do with the money they receive? You know, like you, if you go to Sinai, as I, as I pointed out uh, earlier, it's, it's a very poor area. But then, like within those the, the, the desert, you, you you just bump into huge villas, you know, like with p pagodic style. Um, you have all these all all this this big money uh, 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 houses there. But you cannot say this is money from human trafficking because there is like uh, uh, rocket launchers from Libya smuggled. There is high level. Uh, uh, um, drug trafficking for, 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 for decades going on there. So I was interested in the point uh, that, that uh, Maren uh, 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 touched was, is like, is this money used for, and that would be a very, like, if you could prove that, you know, is this money used, is it going into Islamist hands that fight Israel, you know? Then you could, you could have Israel in the boat, you know? then Israel would suddenly start to be interested uh, uh, about what's going on there, you know, if, if, the, if the money would... But, I mean, in this area it's very difficult to find out such things, you know, where does the money come from that the Islamists use? They are heavily supported by, by fundamentalist groups uh, from all over the world. They finance themselves by smuggling of arms, weapons, uh, uh, drugs, and they might also be financed by 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 these hundreds of millions of of, of dollars that flow into this area uh, through human uh, through human trafficking in the last five six years. You know, but uh, you you will never find out this in in the area itself. But what you can find out is like <coughs> Western Union. You have to get your ID on the table and. Um, you know, it would be super easy to, 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 to find the people and take them out, and it has happened, you know, like in a lot of, a lot of the, 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 the intermediates have been detained in, in, um, in Israel. But it goes on, you know, and the, 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 the traffickers become smarter and more alert, and they find other ways to keep their trade route up. But I, I also want to say that, that you know, like, um, I agree with with uh, Maren on on this fact that I mean, if you if if you or people in your family are affected, um, uh, get in touch with Maren, you know, and uh, report report on these issues. You know, it, it is very, very important to, to report on it. You know, go to the police, say this is what happens here, I'm, I'm here in Germany, um, this is the situation, report. You know? Um, you were talking about the traffic chains and um, also you were mentioning that uh, people are being also kidnapped from Cairo. And I'd like to introduce for a moment Dagmar Nolte. She had also been working at the, Feinst at the Feinstein uh, study that was tackling um, human trafficking um, and also that trade route uh, to the Sinai. And maybe you also have some, um, you also interviewed a lot of Eritreans and you were also talking about how things in, in Cairo are worsening and you were at the moment also in Cairo. 
maybe you want to say a few words to it. Um. Okay. Um, so basically, the like starting up idea of that study was to um, figure out the decision mechanisms behind um, the traveling of Eritreans out of Eritrea towards Israel and um, to understand how this whole process from smuggling turned into trafficking. And so we, what we figured out is one of the results was that, like, whereas in 2007, most of the people had been smuggled, like there was this intention of agreeing on traveling to Israel, the whole thing turned into something different from, like, there were basically three different kinds of um, journey, more or less of this usual smuggling situation where no abuse was used and where um, even until now the amount of money paid is quite low with like about 3,000 US dollars from um, in 2012 and initially in 2007 like where the first interviews had been conducted or like people traveled um, with about 1,300 US dollars average. Um, and there was this other type where it started off in about 2009 where the first respondents who uh, told us about it um, with an initial smuggling situation where an agreement was of a person wanting to travel to Israel which turned into basically tra trafficking because those people had been asked ransom <coughs> later on. And for those people, like abuse starts to be used to actually get this ransom money. And so, but still, until 2009, like, there was not this third type of people having been kidnapped reported. And it starts, like, in 2011, when Mara actually started with her first calls as well, that people reported of having been kidnapped from Sudan and having been transported against their will using, like, force and uh, mistreatment amounting to torture. Um, that the prices increased and what we found out as well was that actually it was basically exponential that the more money had been asked or the more people traveled, the more money had been asked and so that the spiral went on which is basically as well like this whole problem um, going back to Germany or Europe as well like the more we pay the more they ask mm -hmm. and like the amount that has been asked increased um, from like initial payments of about 10,000 US dollars to um, what is the average right now, about 30, 45,000 US dollars. Like the people I interviewed, I had some people telling me that they had been asked to pay 70,000 US, which is incredible. And um, so this is our main findings. And um, I know about people who had actually been in, in um, Sanay and who had like who managed to escape, who were sent back to Ethiopia who travelled again who had been kidnapped a second time for example as well. Um, so this is like basically an ongoing process. What was interesting as well is to see like how the Israeli situation of like having finished the border fence and um, having introduced the infiltration law mm. has changed the whole business as well. Yeah. Which is what you targeted with your um, yeah. like trafficking route and you have to go back to the route. The end is like something that affects the beginning as well. Yeah. And um, because like with about 2,000 people still crossing into Israel um, a month before the infiltration law has been um, launched, down to 10 persons having crossed into Israel from like introduction of the interpretation law is pretty impressive for the fact that people tell you when you interview them, oh, we never intended to go to Israel. So you know that like, there were all these kind of um, discussions <coughs> as well in interview, which is really difficult as well. Um, but there's definitely like a lot of information going in and out to Eritrea, and more people do know than they actually would would actually say they. That will help. Yeah, yeah, I understand what I want to say. Thank you, Dagmar. Um, so uh, yeah, I think um, we are almost at the end. At the end, and um, so I have uh, one last personal question. Then I'd like to open the floor. I also highlight that um, with Annette Code, we also have a politician. Uh, 
on the panel. So if you have any questions regarding that, I think it's also very interesting to know that we have someone here invited from the parliament and uh, who hopefully also takes back some questions um, into the Bundestag. And um, yeah, I just wanted to remind you on that. Um, <laughs> I know you all know that. Uh, but um, Michael, when I read your story, uh, the last sentence was that, um, or the ending was that uh, phone, you never talked to a hostage, but the phone rang and um, I wondered what happened to you. It's a very personal question, but how did it left, leave, leave you um, um, with that story? Yeah, yeah the uh, Salomon, uh the young Eritrean that I met in the beginning of this trip in Tel Aviv, um, he gave me uh, the, the telephone number of his torture camp. You know, the, the, the number where when he was held hostage in the torture camp, the number his sister called, you know. So he said, you know, take it. If you, if you want to go, if you want to kill yourself and go to Sinai, take, take the number, you know, they, they're going to kill you. That's what, that's what he said. But here's the number, maybe it still works. So, like, um, in my time in, in Sinai, I, I constantly, like, I had, an, I had a local phone and I constantly called this number and then the number was busy, 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 and then it, they wouldn't take up the phone. So, um, I think um, my phone number was put on visible, you know, so they could call me back. And um, nobody ever called me. But I think in the end, it happened the same way that it happened to Meron, you know? Like, they, they have noted down the number. And I had already left the Sinai, and I was back in Cairo again, and uh, on, on my way to the airport, um, the, the phone rang. And uh, on the display was the number from the torture camp. And... Um, I'm, I'm not really, I, I'm unable to explain the, the exact kind of coherence of the situation. Why did this woman call me? And so anyway, like I, I, I took a deep breath and I, I took the phone call and, and uh, there was a, a young Eritrean woman on the other side. Yeah, she told me her. She told me her name, and she said, "You know, I'm here. I'm in torture camp." And we were able to um, to to to, um, to exchange a couple of words. You know, like maybe she was. Maybe she she thought I would be somebody else. I, I really don't know. Maybe they told her to to call me. Mm -hmm. And um, any time, any anyway, like um, you know, I felt completely. Um, helpless, and uh, and then she started to cry, you know. And then then she she shouted and screamed and said, "Oh my God! Oh my God! Help me! Help me! Help me!" They they are cutting off my fingers, you know. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. And then the the phone call was uh, cut off, you know. So I was then talking to to uh, to a lot of people who who know the the. The situation very well, and uh, there was no nothing we we could do for this woman, you know. But um, also, my story ends. My, the, the written story ends like this, and it's kind of. I think the ending is is uh, is a very powerful one because it illustrates the complete helplessness, my helplessness, but also the the helplessness of the people who want to look at it. But I think the biggest part of the helplessness is that so many people look away, you know, and, and, and just nobody wants to, 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 to face it, you know. It's there, it has to be addressed, um, it has to be fighted. Uh, responsible people have to be pushed into action. Who are the responsible people? Everybody's responsible. I mean, you also are responsible in a way, you know, you have your own responsibility. These are your people. When I say your people, it's also my people, you know, because there is no, 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 no uh, difference between your people and my people. But you speak the language. Um, I don't, you know, I don't speak any uh, Tigrinya. So what can you do, you know, as a, as a community? And uh, I think, um, you know, first you have to face it. 
I mean, we all have to face it. When I say you, I don't mean you, I mean the universal you, you know. Let's face it, it's there and uh, push for action. Go for it. Recommend your people to stay, to fight the thing from inside, you know. Don't recommend your people to leave Eritrea, you know, that's... You will end up, uh, they, they might end up in this, in this situation, you know? they might be, they, they, they might end up in this situation that, that they call somebody and, and then have to say, oh my god, oh my god, help me, they cut off my fingers, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, you know, that's, that's uh, high risk. But also I know, like, I'm not in the position to recommend you anything, you know, and I don't, I'm not in the position to re recommend an Eritrean who suffers in his country to stay there, you know, that would be really ridiculous, you know. So in the end, everybody has to make up his mind. But as a politician, um, and many Eritreans, I suppose, have the German nationality. Uh, well, I was uh, first uh, first time elected 2009, so that is now my second term. I never, never, you know, thought about uh, addressing my, uh, you know, the politician from my constituency about whatsoever. But I learned. Since I'm in Parliament, what we do as citizens, we do not make them accountable. Far not enough. You know, they get away with it, with everything, and then they are getting re-elected four years later. In between, you know, there is no... Do we know what... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even know who's uh, <laughs> from, from, uh, from Frankfurt in the Bundestag. Of, um, well, so, but, I mean, ask questions. I mean, one of the nicest phone calls uh, I had, I must say, after, you know, your story, uh, and then you mentioned my name and uh, the interpolation. There was somebody from Mannheim, Eritrean with a German nationality. He said, you know, we want that Annette will be re-elected. Now we pass the word around and promote Annette. Please vote for the link. So, because... It's, uh, <laughs> This is really remarkable, yeah? Uh, it worked. Uh, it was really, n nobody ever thought that I would be re elected. I must say so, but okay. Um, but this is uh, what really um, I encourage us, whether you retrace Germans or wheresoever, what kind of nationality, we should put much more pressure on our elected politicians. Really, whether it is uh, you know human rights, this is a very grateful uh, topic, by the way, you know. And whether it is you know our case now, ask you know the members from from Frankfurt, what are you doing there, or have you ever you know? <laughs> they don't tell you. They that, if you do that on abgeordneten watch, they do, because then it is public. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I guess uh, that is a powerful tool, uh, or, or just even for, for newspapers. I mean, um, my, if I hadn't been elected, I had, I had a very good colleague from the uh, Christian Democratic Party, from the Conservative. She was, like me, passionate about refugees on human rights issues. She did not uh, stand as a candidate any longer. And then we called it each other in, in summer. I, 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 exactly, I gave her a case because she is also a lawyer. And I said, you know, uh, if I'm not re-elected, re then we both look at the composition of the Human Rights Com uh, Committee and then we put pressure from outside. <laughs> she really loved and said exactly that we will do. So this is uh, one, one uh, tiny step maybe, but I consider it important, um, and of course I, I, will, I will continue and uh, put uh, more pressure and I hope that the next uh, no, uh, co Human Rights Committee that I will find again at least one or two, you know, um, colleagues who are prepared with me to, to back me and to support that. Yeah, I would also be interested, um, so far I have not found um, an affected Eritrean person in Germany who is willing to even talk to me, you know? 
I mean, not like to me as a Michael Obert, not as a journalist, you know, like first, like nobody ever in Germany, we, we, there are different estimations, but there is dozens of families in Germany who, who are affected. And uh, so also, I mean, you pass the word, think, think it over, you know, if it, if it uh, because that also can be a tool to, 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 to push, because so far uh, the problem is somewhere in the Middle East, you know. Um, it's not in Germany, but it is in Germany. It's in all the European countries, and and I think it would be really worth to, to 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 to, to you know bring it into the, the the heads and minds and hearts of of the people here that your neighbor your your, your Eritrean neighbor could be you know victim. a victim, and um, you know think it over. Um, Sabine has my contact, and uh, I would be very interested in in talking to. Uh, to people, you know.